Good afternoon, everybody. Today is Friday, December 18th, 2020, and this is the Falmouth Health Department. My name is Scott McGann, doing your weekly COVID-19 update. Our phone number at the Health Department is 495-7485. Our email is health at falmouthma.gov. And the town's website is falmouthmass.us. So as of today, there's 581 cases of COVID that's been confirmed since the beginning, our first case being March 19th. 71 over the past week. About 75% of the cases are no longer in isolation. And we remain steady at about 13.8 of all cases, with 14% being expected among the county. Of course, the VNA, CTC, the health department, we're still, you know, uh, working hard to do the contact tracing, getting everybody contacted and getting all that stuff done. Uh, a little bit about the cases. If you look here, that um, obviously, you know, this is our weekly. I give you this every week about the number of cases per week. And you can see there's been a sharp increase over the last uh, four weeks. Um, of, there's been 240 cases since uh, the 20th of November. 137 of those are non-long-term care cases, and 103 are from two clusters, two long-term uh, assisted living uh, facilities here in Falmouth, which is 43% of the total number of cases. So sometimes, and that's not where you want it, and it, that's just not a good situation when you have that happen in, uh, in um, long-term care type of facilities. Um, but one of the things I did want to say is with community spread, you also look at those are isolated uh, to the long-term care. That includes also uh, staff and maybe uh, cases that have stemmed from staff. So I did a deep dive in it uh, yesterday uh, to, to get that, that number. Um, that we're probably in the community away, uh, with putting those two long-term care uh, facilities aside, averaging about 35 cases per week which I put that line um, over the last four weeks to show you about where we would be if we did not have uh, two long-term care uh, uh, clusters occurring currently in the la over the last four weeks. I used 1120 because that's when the first one popped into uh, long-term care. And so I, I just tried to give you sort of a, you know, when you're watching this, one of the things is you're, you're measuring your risk and, and how it is in the community is for, uh, by and large. I say by and large, we're definitely on the high side. You can see since about uh, th right around the beginning of November that there's been, a, there's been a marketed increase from the 5 or 10 we were averaging, then we were in that sort of 15, and then all of a sudden 25, and now we're in 35. But we've been holding somewhat steady at 35 for the last couple of weeks, right around 35 a week. So there's definitely community spread. There's no doubt about it. It's not at the, you know, the same rate that it might be if you just looked at the total number. Uh, you can see that we've been on a sharp increase since November, uh, mid-November. Uh, you want that to be flat. We did such a good job early on flattening, and, and this is some of it coming out of Thanksgiving, some of it with activities, things people doing, moving around more than they were ever before, and a lot of it being indoors because it gets cold, and then we had Thanksgiving, and all that stuff adds up to an increase in cases. Um, we're going to talk about the color charts. Um, again, for Falmouth, it's 43 cases. Once you get to 43, greater than 43, you can either be yellow or red, and it's going to link into your positivity rate. If you're at below 5, they'll keep you yellow. If you're above 5% in the 43 plus, you would be at the red. So looking at Falmouth, we remained yellow. Again, these, this data is pulled from the last two full weeks, so this would be 1129 to 1212 data. Um, you can see that um, we're averaging, you know, you can see from early on November, you can see the increase with this, um, that we've been going for our daily incidence rate per 100,000 to being now somewhere in the 28 and a half range. Our positivity rate um, remained less than 5%. That's why we're in the yellow, but it has gone up to 3.69. Um, better than average, if you go down to, uh, well, about average with the state over the last uh, well, actually, it's it's about half what the state. It's about what the state was back in uh, late November, so we remain about a little more than half, maybe sixty percent of the the positivity rate that the rest of the state has. The county's at four point four percent for this week, um, so we're done doing better than the county in percent positivity. But positivity has a lot to do with the number of tests, and we're one of the highest testing. And I'll show you in a minute. Uh, but 4,367 tests were issued from eleven twenty nine to twelve twelve, and that's. That's quite a bit of tests. So that's 2150 or so a week. Um, that's a robust amount of testing, um, which helps our percent positivity. Okay, if we were testing less, we might be over 5%. Depends on how many tests we issue, are issued in, this, in, this, in the town. Countywide, they've been holding steady at around you know 75 to 100 cases um, on the three-day average. You know, so there's been 4,178 confirmed 
uh, ca uh, cases in Barstable County. Um, this is what I wanted to show you. Uh, the, you want the left-hand call, the left-hand map to be um, dark and you want the uh, right hand to be light. So the, our testing rate, if you look at Falmouth down here, um, with Falmouth, as you see, it's on a darker color, we're Nant similar to like Nantucket and some of the vineyard. Um, so we remain that we're robust in our testing, which is great. So we test more than, we've been testing more than average over this two week span. And our percent positivity has been holding its own where it's more on the lighter color. Um, so we're testing more, and, but we, and we seem to be holding our own with our percent positivity. Uh, this is the daily dashboard. This comes out every day. It's been between 3,500 and 6,000 cases per day, uh, somewhere between 35 and 45 deaths per day. Um, our positivity rate continues to climb. The overall positivity in the state is 6%. Um, the average age of hospitalization is about 67. The average age of, age of death is 81. Um, the turnaround for uh, testing has dropped from about two days to 1.83, so that, that means the labs are sort of keeping up a little bit. There were 92,000 tests in that one in this particular uh, in this one particular day. Uh, hospitalizations in ICU are both up. We have a slide on that later. On the right, you can still see that the uh, the people under the age of roughly from 40 or younger has been getting the majority of the tests, the majority of the positives, and better with the 70 to 80 plus year old range. And that's been a trend recent, probably the last three or four months. And this chart also reflects it. This chart shows that the yellow and the um, red would be those over 70. And those that are younger would be the orange, dark blue, and light blue. So the bulk of the cases have transitioned from the beginning where there was a lot more older, older folks and less younger. And as we get more tests, we're catching the kids that were mildly sick. And not that they weren't getting it back then. It was just that there were not a lot of tests and not a lot of high, high level of, of illness from it. Um, so you're, you generally tend to catch most of the older group where you don't seem to catch less if you're just basing it on symptoms. And now with a lot more testing, it's a lot easier, a lot more frequent testing, then you can get a more accurate representation. Uh, as far as uh, our metrics, we're up 1,900% in total number of uh, the seven-day average new confirmed cases. 680% of the positivity rate than when we were the lowest of 0.8. Um, again, anything over 2% means uh, that you've got uh, rapid community, you've got community spread going on. The higher the number, the more rapid it is. Hospitalizations is up 1,000% from the lowest uh, value of 155. And deaths are the lowest was 11, area at 45. Um, cases, this is the total number of cases that have confirmed, uh, almost 300,000. A positivity. This uh, chart I mentioned before, the average is the dark blue at 6.02%. The light blue is um, higher education only. If you take out for higher education and you have just the general population, not the higher education routine test, a positivity is actually at right around 8%, between 7.85 and 8%, right in that range for the last few days. So the positivity is definitely, definitely way too high. And that positivity just means the number of people that are positive divided by the number of tests. Uh, hospitalizations, there's 1871, uh, up 264 from the number that we got from last week when I did this presentation. Uh, ICUs are up 76 and intubations are up 39 from last week. So that still continues to increase, not quite to the same rate that the testing is, which, you know, hopefully, you know, the hospitals are able to maintain um, enough beds. Hospitalizations are on the, on the rise, um, not quite at the same rate that we had seen earlier, which is good. Um, and so, but they, do, they are definitely still on the rise, no doubt. For our area, down at the below, on the last report I got was 1216 that showed that Cape Cod Hospital had 22 uh, in the hospital with six in the ICU. Falmouth Hospital was 10 and one. Um, so that's, so that's a total of 32 and 7 uh, for the 16th. That's the most recent one I do have. And that's more similar to where we were um, earlier on in the pandemic. Not quite as bad as we were, let's say, in, probably more similar to where we were in the May range of um, hospitalizations. Uh, Long-term care, the, the, the 7,000 deaths associated to this date, 7,084, with uh, 29,000 on the most recent. Uh, the two, we have two long-term care facilities that I've mentioned, uh, the Royal on Jones Road and the Atria Woodbryant Park. Uh, both uh, are having the, um, 
uh, the high counts lately, and so there are over 30 cases. Um, so you know they, that they deal with the they're dealing directly with the epidemiologists at the state, and they've been working on you know getting everything under control on that. And you know the cases have dropped, the numbers have dropped uh, more recently. So you know that's what happens. And what happens is is it's you know somebody comes a, a staff member or somebody gets comes in, and they might be an ace, what they call the asymptomatic spreader or mildly symptomatic, and not really know they have COVID and Unfortunately, that's sometimes that's it, it really gets out of hand um, at, at some of these uh, congregate lit care facilities. Uh, COVID testing, same thing as we were before, Falmouth Hospital, uh, the call center. Also, there's the drive-through that opened this week at Barnstable County Fairgrounds. You book an appointment through the same call center. It's an automated system. Um, so if you need it, if you need it, um, ours is operating here in Falmouth. I think three days a week um, to sort of stretch the amount of funding that we got for it. Um, if you needed a test, you would call from there. So you'd have the, that option. You will still always have the options of the walk-in clinics like Convenient MD, the Community Health Center of Cape Cod and Mashpee, and the CBS in uh, East Falmouth. Um, you know, these, air, these one, two, three, five spots or so are producing you know, about 2,000 tests per week. Uh, types of tests, again, these are the PCR tests for the most of it. You also do see the antigen test. The antigen, antigen test is a good test. It's rapid, just not quite as accurate of the gold standard that PCR is. Um, but it is a rapid result rather than waiting the 1.8 hour, eight days that it was uh, currently taking to get a PCR. If you have symptoms and you had a PCR test and you're waiting results, you need to make sure that you self-isolate yourself. Because if you have symptoms and you think you have COVID, you have to treat it like you have COVID until uh, you get your result. Um, you can't just sort of go, go to work and go about your way. Now, if you're routinely being tested as a healthcare worker or something like that, obviously you don't need to, if you're being tested on a weekly basis, wait for your results. But if you're symptomatic, you're being tested, those types of things, you definitely need to make sure that you're self-isolating. Uh, we're rolled back to, uh, this is the same slide as last week. We're in phase three, step one, which is lowered 50 to 40, from 50% to 40%. A lot of these different entities, offices, worship, lodging, uh, theaters, uh, the types of things like that, gyms, uh, outdoor theater and performances, uh, no more than 50. So all that's been reduced. That was reduced a little bit while back. Um, if you have any detailed questions, the guidance is on the DPH's website. If you're a business on what you can do, can't do. Um, but that's where we're at right now. And that's got basically been rolled back about a week or two ago, about a week or so to ago. Uh, social distancing and face coverings, again, everywhere, indoor and outdoor, in public areas, you need to be wearing a mask. A hand washing, hand sanitizing, the quarantine upon arrival, limiting, ar li limiting your travel, especially as the holidays. We'll be putting up some guidance on that as well on the website. Uh, if I get a chance, I'll get that done today. Um, it's, a, it's the gatherings, the parties, mo all the metrics show that it's the, uh, the, the most common way that you would get COVID is a family member in your household having it and spreading it. That's obviously going to be always the, the case. And then the gatherings, the parties, uh, the, the get-togethers are the other area where it's the most common. Um, so stay at home when ill. Get tested. If you have any symptoms, definitely get tested. If you're a business, make sure you're following the state guidance in the health department. If we get complaints, we do follow up with it on, uh, on businesses and so forth. Um, make sure that they're following the guidance. Uh, vaccine. So we'll talk a little bit about the vaccine. So obviously we have one, uh, the Pfizer one's approved and Moderna just got approved. That's right. So uh, Pfizer's has to be a deep freeze. Uh, the Moderna could be refrigerated up to 30 days uh, and it kept frozen in a regular freezer uh, prior to that. Um, whereas the Pfizer needs to be kept. It's much more difficult to handle. But the Pfizer's out. Um, I know that Falmouth Hospital has been giving them out to their staff. Um, so clinical and non-clinical health care workers, direct COVID uh, long-term care facilities, the police, fire, and EMTs, medical services, congregate care, uh, home-based health care workers, um, and non-COVID facing care. So that's phase one that's happening starting already. Um, then it goes to individuals with two core morbidities, 65 and older, uh, early education, sanitation, public health workers, public works, things of that it will be phase two. Um, right now, you know, what the health department and so forth are working. Um, the, the, the first phase is really being done um, by others, uh, not necessarily in a clinic um, setting. And with the exception of the fire and police emergency, we'll be working on whether we're going to do that countywide or we're doing that. Each town's doing their own, um, and that's discussions happening this morning, and, you know, we're doing that and working on that right now. 
And then the general public would be sometime, you know, April through June, and that's where you'll start seeing the larger clinics. It's really going to be all hands on deck. I was the state had their call today. Uh, it might be coming from different areas. You might be able to get it through your doctor. You might be able to get it through uh, the places we flu shots now. So like CVSs and Walgreens and places like that, Convenient MD and Dr. Lee and all that. And there'll also be clinics from the health department. Would be put on town clinics, and you know, it'd be all hands on deck at that point. Um, so. You know, we, we're definitely trying to stay on top of it. The next slide I got is, don't, don't worry about the details. This is sort of my brain sort of saying, you know, how are we going to do clinics? So there's a lot going on. There's a lot of departments. There's the health. There's fire. There's, you know, for example, you have to wait 15 minutes. This is a brand new vaccine. You just can't take off like your flu shot. So we have to have a way of holding you for 15 minutes. And having uh, medical staff there to make sure there's a, any allergic reactions or anything to that. Um, there's also going to be a signing up, and there's making sure you come back after either 21 or 28, depending on which one you get. And this, so there's a lot of details. So I've kind of broken it down to there'll be an administrative end, a call center, so to speak, where you'll be able to sign up. Um, I've had some folks call to sign up now, and they want to know if they can get it, when they can get it, if they can sign up now. We're not at a point where we start taking names now. Um, because uh, uh, the, the state really hasn't given the quite enough details about, you know, what our involvement would be, like how many, you know, is it going to, is it really the way I envision it or is it going to be a little bit different? But eventually we'll get to a point where we'll be on this call and I'll be saying call this number and get yourself, you know, but we're not right at that point, so you don't need to call the senior center or you need to call the health department yet. If, so if you're watching this, you don't need to call yet. We're not taking the names yet. You know, we'll be ready when it's time to be ready. But, you know, there's, there's a lot going on to get it sort of set up. There's the MRC, the Medical Reserve Corps, the CERTs volunteers, there's the VNA, IT has to get in. We have a lot of different little things to have to work on um, to get to get it through, um, through this. And so we, we are definitely working on it and staying on top of it. And uh, we'll take care of it when and as the time comes. So as a recap, vaccines approved and begin and is being di currently distributed. Um, Falmouth Hospital, Cape Cod Healthcare is doing it. Uh, state metrics became, uh, remain very high. If you look at yesterday's uh, weekly COVID dashboard, I think 50% plus towns were red. Falmouth cases are the highest since the beginning of the pandemic. Um, again, 35 a week if you if you took out the two clusters. Um, with the, the clusters, we're definitely averaging more like 70 or so cases per week. Uh, we have over 100 cases in two long-term care facilities. Um, as far as contact tracing, you know, please keep, you know, answer the calls. Um, you know, the, the CTC has hired a lot of people over the last couple of weeks, so we haven't had to, like, uh, make the calls for the CTC, the state. Um, they've brought a lot of people in um, to gear up for the extra cases. You know, that number might come in with a weird number, and you might think it's a telemarketer. It also comes in with a text. You know, make, return that call. If not, we'll, we're gonna be, we'll be calling you. So please answer the calls and go through the process for us. Um, also, if you're high risk, the other thing to, to mention is too, with the cases being high, you need to start thinking about activities and things that you were doing earlier in the pandemic um, and start applying them to today. So if you were staying home a lot less in the spring and you decided to push the envelope in the summer and then you haven't really stopped pushing the envelope and going and doing a lot of things, this would be the time because your, your, your chances of getting it now are as high as they were earlier in the pandemic. So or higher. So they're not, yes, the risk was very low in the summertime. I mean, we were having less than five cases in 2,000 tests or, or 1,200, 1,500 tests and only getting one you know, handful of, of positives very low. Um, but now it's just time to think about modifying behavior, being diligent with the glove wearing, hand washing, mask wearing, um, getting tested with any mild symptoms, uh, you know, and, and just things like that. If you're in your workplace, make sure everybody's doing the mask. If you own a business, just look at your guidance. If things sort of softened up over time and you need to tighten them back up, it's all those things need to be looked at. You know, I do see a trend where that's sort of flattening from that 35. I hope it continues. I mean, I've said that before, and the next day I get 20. Um, hopefully that's not the case, but, um, you know, just remaining diligent and, you know, we're getting close to the finish line, you know, Four months later, you might have, you know, th four or five months and, you, you know, of more of this, but, you know, it's, it's what we need to do. So that's what I have for a uh, update for this week, and I'll see everybody, uh, well, it would be Christmas, uh, so we'll probably be doing them, uh, the uh, next update will be the Monday after the holiday and then the Monday after, after, uh, um, after uh, the, the first, and then we'll do two that week. So we'll be doing the next two Mondays for our updates, and then um, after we get out of the new year, we'll do one the following Friday. So we'll have Monday, Monday, and then the Friday after the Monday. So we'll have two in that week, and then we'll get back to a Friday um, update.
And so everybody take care. Have a good Christmas. There's also going to be some Christmas guidance uh, put out there as well. Uh, but I think you guys all know the drill. It's not going and having and traveling and seeing relatives if you, if you can help it. And so um, it's all just basic stuff. Um, and that's it for our week. I'll see you guys um, in Monday after the holidays, after Christmas. So Merry Christmas, everybody, and Happy Hanukkah, and take care.